This is the third in a series of 12 introductory videos on, based on my book, Teaching in a Digital Age. Um, I'd like to thank the Commonwealth of Learning for making this possible. Um, and in this particular uh, video, we're going to be looking at uh, how one implements online learning. So implementing online learning is based mainly on chapters 7, 12 and 13 of my book. Um, the aim of the 12 videos is to provide a brief introduction to the main themes in the book. Um, the book is free and online. Um, it's uh, managed by BC Campus in British Columbia, which uh, has an open, uh, open textbook project. Uh, you can download it for free and you're able to use it for free. Um, this particular video is about implementing online learning. First of all, I believe that every institution now needs a strategy for e-learning or for blended and hybrid learning or for online learning. Online learning and digital learning will become increasingly important. Now, in a sense, I was saying this before the COVID-19 crisis, but uh, that's made online learning even more critical in an emergency. But um, when that emergency is over, we are still going to need a strategy for online learning in every institution. Well, why is it so important? Well, online learning allows for increased access and flexibility for students, and that's becoming critically important in a changing workforce. Uh, in some countries, the student enrollments from high school are going down because of demographic changes, but the number of lifelong learners who need to come back to study is increasing because of the nature of work, they're changing jobs, they're having to learn new skills and so on. So online learning and blended learning is going to increase rather than diminish over the next few years and it's become, going to become a critically important part of all teaching and learning. And the second reason is to improve learning outcomes, in particular to develop the, the skills that are needed in a digital age. And digital literacy, but in a very broad sense, knowing how to use technology in whatever subject discipline you're working in. Um, and if it's going to become that important as a part of the overall teaching, this is not going to happen by accident you're going to need some kind of strategy to make sure that your institution is up to speed on this. Now in, in Canada, 42% of, of universities and uh, postgraduate colleges had, a, uh, had an e-learning plan or strategy or were implementing one. So most institutions are in Canada certainly are beginning to realize the importance of having a plan for e-learning. And only 3% said one wasn't necessary. And these were very small colleges, which focused particularly on providing uh, a, a very close campus experience. But more importantly, I think that blended and hybrid learning will probably, in Canada at least, constitute 70% of all the courses by 2025. So this is a, this is a, a big uh, scaling up of online and hybrid learning and and that's why you need a strategy you need a plan to get there so what should be in a plan well the first thing i think is the rationale for for change why instructors need to move in this direction and this has really got to come from the senior management although increasingly instructors themselves are putting pressure on management to provide the resources they need to make this move. Then you want to put down what kind of outcomes you want from a plan to move to online learning. For instance, more access, uh, more lifelong learners, uh, better skills and so on. So you've got some way of measuring the success of the plan and also so people know what the plan is trying to achieve. And thirdly, you need to have the actions needed to support the changes. Uh, you're going to need more faculty development. You're probably going to ha have to have a good center for teaching and learning and so on. And then you need to set the responsibilities for implementing the plan. 
at different levels throughout the institution. You will see a chart on the right there, um, you, you, which, which shows that every level, right through from students through to the board of the institution, um, has some role to play in determining how e-learning and online learning might be used at the departmental level, in a particular course and so on. And you need a financial strategy and a set of resources to support that. So those are the kinds of things I will be looking for in a plan. And I want to emphasize particularly in the move to online learning uh, and move to hybrid learning and blended learning, the importance of course design. Um, if you think of the traditional faculty member, they all sit down and sketch out a series of lectures. They'll agree on what the topics are that they're going to teach, probably in, with the rest of the department. But having decided on that, they're pretty free to go ahead and do what they want. And they'll sit down and prepare a lecture, um, a series of lectures. They work out the lectures through the course and maybe less than a day, perhaps, before they give the lecture, they'll do, do some PowerPoint slides, give the lecture and carry on. Online learning is different, it works differently. Uh, I've got an example up here of what an online course design might look like. This is called Online Course in a Book Box. It's from the University of Illinois, and it basically a step-by-step -step, um, description uh, and guide to how to create your own online course. And you'll see there are things like start with the learning outcomes or how you're going to assess and work back from that um, uh, and, and structure the course and so on. So there is a way of going about course design that's been well established uh, for online and uh, blended learning. Um, and that's going to become critically important for ensuring quality in the term in, in, in your online courses. So online learning is different from face-to-face -face teaching in that learners are more isolated and they need a different kind of support that they get on campus. So you, your course needs to have very clear learning outcomes and objectives, uh, which, is, which are uh, explicit, so the students know what they're expected to be able to do. Um, you need a clear structure of work for the students week by week. You need well-defined student activities, what are students supposed to do each week, um, particularly if they're working online. Uh, you need to have uh, make decisions about what media you're going to use, video, text, uh, and how to select and choose that. And that's another topic for one of the for, for one of these videos. Um, and students need to have social learning online. They need to be connected with other students, and there are ways to do that. And lastly, and most importantly, you've got to control the workload, both for the instructor and the teacher. Um, it's easy for the workload to run out of control by giving students too many activities, for instance, um, which you then have to monitor and so on. So in course design, as soon as you move away from a traditional face-to-face -face lecture based course becomes critically important. And this is a learning management system, which are, uh, these are very useful for uh, helping structure a course. You will see on the left hand side is the week one, week two, week three, the student clicks on that and sees what the work is for each week, for instance. This particular learning management system is called D2L, Desire to Learn, um, but there are many others out there. And they're very useful for, um, think of it as your online campus, uh, your set of classrooms, your set of um, lessons where students can go and see what the structure is of their learning. And instructors will need th three types of support if they're going to start increasingly teaching online or blending. They'll need technical support, and that's of two kinds. That's instructional design um, and learning pedagogy support, because you have, you're teaching somewhat differently, and media support in terms of creating videos or uh, putting up stuff on the web and so on. So you, you need that technical support. Then you need faculty training and development because they have to learn a new way of doing things. And you'll need additional resources in terms of 
freeing up faculty to learn how to do this, for instance, and that sometimes means extra money to support uh, the shift. Uh, you're going to probably need to set up centres for digital learning support. The bigger the university, the more distributed that needs to be. Um, but you certainly need at least one centre that, that is central and then maybe a number of departmental centres as well that will support digital learning. It's very important to faculty and instructors to work in a team uh, with instructional designers and media. I like to think of this of uh, like doctors in a hospital. They have a team of people that they work with like nurses, specialists and uh, everybody in the hospital has to work together as a team and that's increasingly important now uh, if you're going to teach in a, in a digital way. Um, your team members will be instructional designers and maybe some media people while you're discussing how to design the course. And uh, one of the things I recommend strongly when you're moving online is creating uh, two or three or four different kinds of course design templates. Uh, that is how, how the course will look. Um, if this will vary, to, you need more than one because teaching science will be different from teaching humanities, but have common design templates which faculty can use at least as a starter. Uh, they can vary those templates as they get more experience, but actually having a kind of step-by-step -step process to work through in getting a course design can be very useful. In terms of technology support, two things. First of all, the technology must work. And secondly, it must be accessible. Um, simpler technology is always better than more complicated technology for those reasons. However, to the technology issue, although important, is less important than getting teaching methods changed. Um, so I, I recommend the simplest technology possible for all students. And particularly in developing countries, that means the ability to work with fairly low bandwidth. Uh, and that works on the kind of equipment that your students are likely to have already, like mobile phones, for instance. Um, you need a learning management system or a virtual learning environment like Moodle or Blackboard or DTL. And I would really consider carefully whether you need video because video takes a lot of bandwidth, uh, 200 times more than text. And so again, you have to think about the bandwidth, not at the university or college end, but at the student end. Um, and if you're using video, that can be very, very expensive for students in charges and so on. Um, so again, Text and audio are probably the best technologies in many circumstances. And lastly, remember that moving to hybrid and blended learning requires a big cultural change in the institution. The biggest challenge is gonna be instructor buy-in. Instructors must be involved in the planning, see that the institution is willing to support them if they wanna move in this direction, and understand the rationale for moving more to e-learning. So leadership is essential, but it can't be just top down. The, it won't work if the president comes and says, we're all gonna to go to online learning. now." Decision-making about course design in particular needs to be devolved. The science teachers, the uh, uh, history teachers, they understand best how their subject should be taught. So they need to be engaged in the decision making about the, de the, the design and of the courses and how those, those are rolled out, what the right mix of face-to-face -face and blended should be. But nevertheless, they should be working with an overall plan to bring about that change. So in conclusion, if you're gonna to move to blended and hybrid learning or non-line learning, it's a major organizational change. You need institutional and department plans for digital learning. You need to push the planning down, certainly to the departmental level. You need good course design for quality learning. You need sufficient instructor support and training. You need appropriate technology support. 
and you need to bring a change in the culture generally. For more information on this, um, it's available in the book, uh, particularly chapters uh, 13. Um, and the next video will be on understanding the learners.